Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. I remember first seeing Jurassic Park on VHS when I was around five to six years old. At the time, I was very optimistic about the possibility of seeing dinosaurs in zoos in the near future. But now, as a full-grown man, child, I still am pretty optimistic about my chances of seeing a real-life dinosaur, and perhaps even riding them into combat with former President Ronald Reagan, and of course, more importantly, we can finally have a real dinosaur barbecue. Hashtag dinosaur barbecue is full of lies. Now, a lot of the beliefs and opinions I hold are not actually substantiated by any type of scientific uh, evidence or even anecdotal evidence. But since we have this YouTube channel, might as well try to science this whole bringing back extinct dinosaurs thing. Because here at Generation Films, we love answering questions you're not even asking. Now, obviously, the Jurassic Park movies, like most movies, stretch the truth quite a bit. For instance, those terrifying velociraptors that appear throughout the entire franchise in real life were actually only three feet tall and around six feet in length, thanks to its very long tail. Weighing in at around 20 to 30 pounds, they were closer in size to turkeys than the monstrous killing machines we saw in the movies. Doesn't mean that they weren't dangerous, of course. Even turkeys are pretty scary in the wild. But the good news is that velociraptors actually have hollow bird bones, which means they should be pretty easy to fight. Anyway, so how did the friendly scientists over at Jurassic Park figure out the whole bringing dinosaurs back to life thing? Well, it all starts with the eccentric capitalist John Hammond, who is obsessed with creating a park full of dinosaurs. Utilizing his vast resources, Hammond realizes he must find some dinosaur DNA. He needs the raw genetic code if he's going to be able to clone some of these ancient living things back to life. Jurassic Park came out in 1993, and cloning was kind of a big thing back then. When Dolly the Sheep was cloned in 1996, everyone was going nuts and wondering when humans would be cloned next. I believe Dolly was even featured on the cover of Time magazine. Hammond finds his DNA in a mine called Manos de Dios, located in the Dominican Republic. These workers unearthed a fossil of a mosquito trapped within amber. Now, this can actually happen. You see, amber is a semi-precious material that forms when tree sap hardens. On occasion, an organism can be trapped within one of these amber stones. Now, in this case, the mosquito trapped in the amber had fed on several dinosaurs 100 million years ago. This meant that its blood might have had the DNA of several ancient dinosaurs stored within it. And that's the genetic material the scientists at Jurassic Park will use to create new dinosaurs. So, just how realistic is this? Well, according to scientists at the University of Manchester, not very realistic. You see, in the early 90s, there were scientists claiming that they could extract the DNA of dinosaurs from 130-year-old amber fossils with mosquitoes inside of them. This is probably where the movie and novel that the movie is based on got its idea in the first place. The researchers at the University of Manchester decided to conduct their own tests on a wide range of younger insect fossils, ranging from 60 years to 10,000 years old. They concluded that the potential for DNA survival in resin is no better and possibly worse than the survival of DNA in air-dried insects that are usually used for display by hobbyists. The scientists found out that amber only preserves the husk of the insects, but not the soft tissue. This is why they found no trace of blood in any of the amber they took a look at. So while amber might not be able to preserve dinosaur DNA within an insect, that doesn't mean it's completely impossible to find dinosaur DNA today. A few years ago, scientists uncovered another mosquito fossil. This one was preserved in lake sediments, and traces of red pigment was found in its abdomen. Scientists took a sample of this red pigment and found substances that could be traced back to blood. This mosquito was over 45 million years ago and had been alive during the time of the dinosaurs. However, DNA is quite fragile and quite difficult to preserve for that long. Enzymes from soil microbes, body cells, and gut cells can all degrade DNA, as can UV radiation. So even if there is the presence of blood, it doesn't mean that DNA will be found intact. Which is why the scientists who took a closer look at this red pigment could also find no trace of DNA. 
So finding some dinosaur DNA will be tough because they went extinct around 20 million years ago. The oldest DNA that's been found intact so far was found in the enamel of a rhinoceros tooth from 1.7 million years ago. But this was using a different technique called proteomics, which helps the scientists basically reverse engineer the DNA by looking at whatever proteins and amino acids can be found inside the organic material. So in this case, you don't actually need to find DNA. You just need the footprints of it, which would be proteins, which are a lot more stable than DNA and can last a lot longer. Prior to that discovery, the oldest DNA data came from a 700,000 year old horse that had been preserved in permafrost. But even then, the quality and completeness of a DNA sample completely depends on how well it's been preserved. In Jurassic Park, the DNA found within the mosquito fossil was actually incomplete. They didn't really talk about proteomics in that movie, so instead they found another way to complete the dinosaur genome. In the film, the scientists use a frog's DNA to fill out the missing sequences, which is actually kind of silly because a frog is amphibian and dinosaurs are much closer related to birds and crocodiles. But this method of filling in the gaps of the DNA is not all that far-fetched. One recently extinct animal that we do have DNA samples of is the woolly mammoth. They were walking around on Earth alongside man only 4,000 years ago. We've discovered several frozen remains of these large animals and extracted genetic information from them. Scientists actually took the most intact nuclei that they could find from the mammoth remains and inserted them into a mouse egg. This activated the mammoth's chromosomes momentarily as the mammoth nuclei attempted to correct any damage that had occurred. Unfortunately, the mammoth cell was not able to completely repair itself, probably because it was 26,000 years old, and therefore never entered the cell division phase. In another experiment, mammoth DNA was taken and examined, and using gene editing techniques, scientists attempted to make those same alterations to an Asian elephant genome. The scientists in that study focused on genes that were associated with cold resistance, like hair growth, ear size, fat amounts, and so on. In this case, instead of trying to grow new mammoth cells, they were trying to genetically modify a close relative of the mammoth into an actual mammoth. Currently, the technology just isn't there yet, though, but just a few decades ago, the idea of gene editing was also not really feasible. So who really knows what the future will have in store for us, but I gotta say it's both exhilarating and terrifying to think about. So one of the biggest hurdles we face in creating actual dinosaurs is whether we can find intact dinosaur DNA. Now scientists have estimated that DNA can probably survive as long as five to six million years if preserved properly. Now that's just a guess, but it does seem to make the likelihood of finding dinosaur DNA very slim. Of course, there are new methods like proteometrics, which could provide us with alternative pathways of finding a full intact dinosaur genome. Now, there is one other very long shot way that dinosaurs might once again walk on Earth, and none of us will probably be around to see it. Jamal Nasiri, a geneticist at Northampton University in the United Kingdom, says we should not rule out the possibility that dinosaurs will once again evolve into existence. This is because evolution is random and it doesn't necessarily always have to progress in a linear fashion. Since the building blocks for creating dinosaurs already exist, all it takes is the right conditions for them to reappear once again. So who knows, maybe in a few more million years, that chicken we all love eating and deep frying might grow back into a dinosaur and chase us around and try to eat us. Which brings us to another interesting thought. If we are to bring back a dinosaur in modern times, would it actually still be able to survive? Sure, Earth is still Earth, but the environment has greatly changed. Temperature, humidity, even oxygen levels are vastly different today when compared to 100 million years ago. Some people might also consider it unethical and cruel to bring a dinosaur back just for entertainment purposes like they do in the movie. Animals are genetically hardwired to exist and survive in certain environments. An ancient dinosaur might have serious problems adjusting to Earth today. More importantly, it takes around 5,000 unique animals to sustain a healthy population. Which means you would not only need to clone 5,000 of a specific dinosaur, but you would need to find 5,000 dinosaurs that are not directly related to one another. So while cloning one dinosaur is going to be complicated already, cloning a sustainable and breeding population will be next to impossible. 
So there you have it guys, that's our research on whether it's viable to actually clone DNAs back into existence. I don't think it is, I don't think the technology is there yet, and it's again going to be really hard to find intact dinosaur DNA. But let me know in the comment section below what you think. Also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. My name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie, and you are the protagonist.